Welcome to our Renman U Insider's Guide to Today's Music Business free webinar. I want to thank you all for joining us here today. My name is Steve Rennie, and I'm going to be your host for this free webinar. Now, I suspect most of you are here today because you're looking to learn more about the music business. And the good news is that in today's world, you have more options at your disposal than ever. On the webinar today, we're going to talk about all those different options that are available to you. And I'm going to give you some important things to think about to help you figure out what the best option is for you. And of course, I'm going to talk about why I think our Renman U course might be the best option of all. And I think the best way to prove that is to give you a personal tour of our course and to show you how it works. So today, we're all going to take a lesson together and see how we do. And once we've been through that lesson, I'll talk about the two options you have for purchasing the course. I really think the more you know about what options you have, the more likely it is that you'll make the right decision for you. Now, over the course of my career, I've been asked a million times, how do you learn the music business? Answering that question has really become something of a mission for me over these last two and a half years. In fact, it inspired me to start a website to give aspiring artists and professionals a place to go to learn more about this music business. It's called RenmanMusicAndBusiness.com. Now, if you're serious about learning the music business, just spend some time there and I guarantee you you'll find all kinds of great advice from some of the smartest, most successful people in the music business, and it's all free. And today, we're going to talk about my latest effort to help folks learn about today's music business. It's called Renman U Insider's Guide to Today's Music Business. When I started in the music business 37 years ago, there were no music industry programs to take. There was no internet. There was no YouTube. Back in the day, there was a book called This Business of Music that was required reading. And today, that book has been replaced by Don Passman's All You Need to Know About the Music Business. And while both of those books were terrific, they tended to focus more on music business contracts and less on how things actually worked. But at the end of the day, that was pretty much it. The rest, you had to learn on your own. And here's what I figured out along the way that I wanted to share with you folks here today. If you really want to learn and succeed in the music business, there are five key elements you need to know, in my opinion. First, you need to make a commitment to learning as much as you can, as fast as you can, and by whatever means you can. This music business is changing every minute, every day, so you need to work diligently to keep up. You need to do your homework. You need to read trade magazines and blogs to understand who the players are and what they're doing. And the fact is, folks, it never, ever stops. The second thing you need to know is you need to ask questions. There's so much to learn in the music business. If you don't ask, you won't get answers and you won't learn anything. Now, I know that lots of folks have questions about this business but don't know who to ask. So when we built the Redman MB website, I created an area within that site where artists and pros could ask questions about the business and get answers. It's called Ask Renman. Now, if you've got a question about the music business, you post it right there, and I promise that I'll answer it for you. But the reality is I'm just one person in this music business, and there are lots of smart, successful people in the business that you'll want to know. And if you want to meet those folks, you're going to learn number three, that you have to network. The best way to learn is by hanging out with smarter, more talented, more experienced people than yourself. Now, fortunately, you'll meet some of the smartest, most talented, most successful people in the music business on our web show called Ren Man Live. It's the only show on the web where you can meet industry leaders, ask them questions, and get answers. And trust me, folks, that's a whole lot easier than when I started in the business. Now, if you're successful in meeting those smart folks in the business, you're much more likely to find someone who can help fast-track your learning. Element number four, find a mentor. 
I was lucky to have some mentors in my career and it made a huge difference. These were people who were much smarter, more experienced, and more successful than me. And that's not just my story. Almost all the successful folks in this music business were lucky enough to find some mentors along the way who helped fast track their learning. <clears throat> and all of those mentors were serial doers. And that brings me to the most important element. You learn the music business by doing. The people who succeed in the music business are doers. They're not afraid to take chances. They're not afraid to make mistakes. Most of them are as impatient as hell. And most of them started doing while they were learning. And I want you to do the same. That's how I learned the music business. Let's talk about how you are going to learn the music business. A lot has changed since I got started, and today you have a lot more options. So let's spend some time and talk about those options right now. You've got four different options to study the music business. First, you can study at a four-year university. Secondly, you can learn from online music biz experts. Third, you can check out free online services and blogs to learn. And four, you can go out and do it old school by doing it on your own. So let's take a look at that first option, studying the music industry at a four-year college or university. Unlike when I started in the business, today there are thousands of universities across the world today who are offering degrees in some form of music industry curriculum. Schools like USC Thornton School of Music, the Bandier Program at Syracuse, the Clive Davis Institute at NYU, Belmont University and Frost School of Music, just to name a few. And as you might expect, some of those top schools are located in music hubs like New York, LA, and Nashville. Now, the competition to get into those schools schools is intense. I know from my own experience because my youngest son is going to USC and he's in the music industry program. In addition to those traditional four-year colleges, there are also a number of colleges who specialize in the creative arts that offer degrees as well. Schools like Musicians Institute, Berkeley College of Music, Full Sail University, or SAE Institute. The curriculum at those colleges is all about the music in the music industry. Now, while we're on the subject of colleges, I want to take a moment to address a question that I'm asked all the time. Do I need a college degree to work in the music business? We've been taught since we were young that you need to go to college and get a degree if you want to get a great job and build a career. So let me be clear on this. I think college is a great thing. I went to college. My sons go to college. Lots of successful people in the music business went to college as well. But most of them did not study the music business specifically. They learned other things at college that they applied in their music careers. When I was in college, I studied business. And that helped me tremendously when it came to accounting, budgeting, and marketing. I was on the debate team, which taught me how to be an advocate for ideas. And those skills came in very handy in my career as a manager advocating for my clients. One of the best reasons to go to college is that it can offer you experiences beyond the classroom that can help you in your music business career. My friend Bill Silva is a very successful manager and promoter who I interviewed on Ren Man Live, and he had some wonderful thoughts on the college experience that I want to share with you right now. I think college is a great time to do something because what I, what I take away from college is that it's a time where we mature as, as human beings. We learn how to interact with different people than the communities we've grown up in. You know, I grew up in a strictly you know, Catholic community. We, we had very little diversity in that community. And when I went to college, you know, of course, I, uh, I was spending a lot of time with people of a lot of different ethnicities, mm -hmm. um, a lot of different religious groups, uh, you know, different sexualities, different worldviews, certainly. And that was critical to my path mm -hmm. in terms of being able to succeed in business because mm -hmm. it gave me the ability to interact with enough people in different ways. So. That was one of the important things I took from college. Another important thing I took was there's certain habits you have to have to be successful in life. And I, I started developing those in college.
Now, you don't have to wait until you've graduated college to start doing in the music business. When I was back in college, I got started by running the concert committee at USC, booking shows, meeting agents, managers, and record industry folks. No matter what you're studying in college, find ways to get involved with the music business while you're there. On that concert committee, at the radio station, at the college newspaper, or find an intern gig during summer breaks. Another reason to go to college is that getting that degree demonstrates your ability to commit and finish a task. I had a chance to interview music industry blogger Bob Lefsetz on Ren Man Live, and he talked about the value of a college degree, and here's what he had to say. The most important thing about college is that you finish mm -hmm. for two reasons. One, people say, you went to college, you graduate? Yes. They don't really care unless you went to an elite, unless you went to the Ivy League, they don't care where the hell you went. They don't learn anything in college. He goes, proves that you can finish something. Yes. It's like, you know, that bit about success and work. Most of it's about showing up. That's Bang. true. Another question I'm asked frequently is, what is the value of a music business degree when it comes to getting a job in the music business? Now, I understand that lots of big music companies are going to tell you that they require a degree before you'll be considered for a job. And I think in most cases it's true, particularly true at the entry level. And for the most part, it won't matter what that degree is in. The music business, though, is much more art than science and does not lend itself to easy measurement of your skills. Degrees are much more valuable in other areas like law or medicine or accounting where there is a defined skill set and a way to measure it. But it's certainly not going to hurt you if you have a degree in the music business. So the bottom line is this. If you're thinking about going to college and you can make it happen, by all means do it. But if you can't make college happen, it does not mean you won't be successful in the music business. There are plenty of successful people in the music business who do not have college degrees, and I'm one of them. Your attitude, ambition, and dedication are much more valuable assets when it comes to succeeding in the music business. In the music biz, it's all about doing. It's all about relationships and networking. Having a great attitude is 10 times more important than waving a music business degree. And let me tell you something. If you can demonstrate those skills, there is not one company in the music business that won't hire you. So let's talk about some of those other ways you can learn the business without going to college. In today's world, technology has had a huge impact on education, and that is true in the music space as well. You can study the music business today without ever stepping foot on a campus. Today, you can get expert advice for a fee. There are lots of online music business experts out there, folks like Joe Solo or Dave Kuzek's New Artist Model or the Music Industry Blueprint, Music Industry How-To, Creative Live, and Lynda.com. And if you can't afford to spend any money at all, then there are a number of free online options to learn about the music business. Sites like YouTube, RenmanMusicAndBusiness.com, Hypebot, Ari's Take, Indie on the Move, Billboard, and CD Baby, just to name a few. Okay, which one of these options is the best for you? There are a number of factors that you'll need to consider as you try to figure out what's the best option for me. First, cost of tuition. Studying at a top university is expensive. If you look at the schools we talked about earlier, 48,000 for USC, 25 grand a year at NYU, 40 grand at Syracuse, 38 grand a year at Berkeley, 27 at Belmont, uh, 58,000 for a degree at SAE, 56,000 for a degree at Full Sail University. That's not cheap. And the fact is, lots of talented folks just cannot afford to attend college or universities. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have parents that can pay the tab, great. But if not, you'll need to apply for student loans that will take years to pay off, and that's something you really need to think about. So the reality is that you might need to look at some cheaper alternatives like some of those online experts. Some of those folks like Joe Solo, Dave Kuzek's New Artist Model, Music Industry Blueprint, Lynda.com, or Music Industry. One thing to keep in mind is that while these options are a lot cheaper, they do not offer a proper degree that you'll get attending a four-year college if that's important to you. 
Another issue, location. Location is a big issue. I get asked all the time if it matters where you live if you're looking to be successful in the music business. And I think the fact of the matter is that location is an issue. If you're going to work in this music business, I think you need to go where the action is. And that means moving to one of those music capitals of the world. When it comes to learning the music business, location is an issue as well. As we just saw, the cost of tuition at those major universities is really high. So if you want to study at one of those top universities, you'll need to live in those cities, which also adds to the cost of that education. These online courses offer you a way to learn from home and avoid the cost of relocating to another city. Another thing you'll want to consider is the expertise of instructors. The top universities invest a lot of money to make sure they have top-of-the-line instructors to teach their courses. So if you're going to go to a top university to learn about international relations, for example, it would be awesome if you were learning from a true expert in the field like Condoleezza Rice. But more often than not, that's not going to be the case. Most college professors have spent their careers teaching rather than doing in their specific fields. And the fact of the matter is that there is a big difference between folks who've learned about something by reading books or magazines or academic articles and those that learn by doing. And for the most part, music industry courses at even the top universities are being taught by education professionals and not music business professionals. Many of those online experts we talked about aren't experts at all. So who should you listen to? All things being equal, your perfect instructor would be somebody who understands and can teach the fundamentals and who's actually tested those fundamentals successfully in the real world. My advice, listen to the doers. There is book knowledge and then there is knowledge gained from experience. In the music business, experience matters and don't let anybody tell you that it doesn't. Another thing you'll want to consider when you're deciding what's best for you is the curriculum, whether it's an academic approach or an insider's view. When it comes to curriculum, everybody is teaching the same core elements of the music business. They'll talk about record companies, they'll talk about music publishing, they'll talk about touring, they'll talk about marketing and promotion, and more often than not, they'll spend a whole lot of time on contracts. But the music business is not quite that simple. Business is not done in a classroom. It's done in the real world. And oftentimes, things are not what they seem in the music business. While the fundamentals of the music business might be the same, understanding how things work in the real world is hugely important. Let me give you an example. If you ever watch golf on TV, you'll notice that all the top players have a caddy who carries their bag and helps that player manage their way around the golf course. Just like the music biz, sometimes things on the golf course are not quite what they seem, and an experienced caddy can make a huge difference. Imagine a golfer is playing a shot into a green, and in front of that green is a huge sand trap. The key is to hit a club that clears the sand trap and puts you safely on the green. So you pull out your laser range finder and it says you are 150 yards from the pin. You want to hit your 8-iron, which you typically hit 150 yards, but your caddy suggests that you hit your 7-iron, which goes 160 yards, but you don't want to listen. So you hit your 8-iron and it winds up landing in the bunker. What happened? That caddy knew from experience that while the book said the pin was 150 yards away, the hole was well uphill from where the players were hitting their shot. And when you're hitting uphill, the ball won't travel as far. The moral of the story? Context is hugely important. If you want to learn the music business, you need knowledge of the fundamentals for sure, but you also need context, and that comes from experience. Okay, let's recap what we've talked about so far. We've talked about how you learn the music business. We've talked about what your options are to learn the music business. And finally, we talked about some important factors you'll want to consider when deciding what the right option is for you. Now I want to take a look at our course. The course is broken down into 10 separate modules. Each module contains a number of video lessons. 
The big picture. If you're looking to do something big in the music business, getting your head in the right place is one of the most important and most often overlooked elements of success in the music business. In this module, we'll talk about understanding the music business from the 30,000 foot view. Making great music. The music business is built around great songs and great performances by great artists. Now, those songs don't write themselves. They're created by talented artists who have something to say and the talent and desire to say it. In this module, we talk about what it takes to make a great song and who some of the players are in that mix. Treating your career as a business. Doing something you're passionate about and making a living out of it is a difficult thing to do. The fact is, love is great, but it doesn't pay the rent. In this lesson, we'll approach the music business with the mindset and mentality of an entrepreneur and teach you to look at your career in the music as a business. Building a professional team. If you want to do something great, you'll likely need some help. So picking a team of professionals is the best way to make that happen. In this module, we're going to talk about who the key players are you need on your team, what they do, how much they get paid, how you find them, when you need them, and more. Managers. Picking the right manager might be the single most important decision an artist will make once that music is made. In this module, we tell you everything you need to know about how to pick that great manager. Marketing and promotion. How to stand out from the crowd has always been the great challenge in the music business. In this module, we'll talk about how to identify and reach your fans and all the tools you'll have at your disposal to do that. Record labels. Understanding what labels do and how they do it is one of the most important things to know whether you're an artist or a music professional. In this module, I'll tell you everything you need to know about labels from how to get their attention, what to look for in a record deal, and how to get the most out of a label once you're there. Music publishing. In this lesson, we talk about one of the most important aspects of the music business, music publishing. It can also be one of the most complicated parts of the business to understand for even the most seasoned veterans. In this lesson, we're going to talk about all the key things you'll need to know about music publishing that will help you turn your songs into money. Touring. Having a successful live business is an important part of building a career. In this module, we're going to talk about how to turn your great performances into money. We'll start by discussing who the players are in the live music biz. We'll talk about developing a strategy for building your live career, how you get paid, what you can do to start building a great live show today, booking that first gig and tour, and some new tools you have at your disposal to help you do it. Getting started. Getting started in the music business is the toughest part. There is no tried and true path to getting started in the music business. It's different for everybody. In this module, I share some getting started stories from some of my friends in the business in the hope that they might inspire you. Whether you're an artist, an aspiring manager, a label exec, roadie, agent, or music publisher, I think you'll find someone here you can relate to. Okay, that's an overview of the course and what we're going to cover. Now let's actually take a lesson. And let's start with a lesson that has some relevance for both artists and music professionals. How to get the attention of a record label. Each lesson contains four separate elements. First, a three to five minute video where I explain that lesson's concept or idea. Secondly, you'll notice that each lesson includes a written transcription of the video for those folks who like to read along as they listen or watch. Third, most lessons are accompanied by a supplemental video interview highlight from one of our past guests on Ren Man Live that relates to that particular lesson. And finally, at the end of each lesson is a quiz to test your understanding and comprehension of each lesson. Okay, let's watch the video and take the lesson. First, let's talk about what it is those labels are looking for when they sign an artist. First and foremost, they're all looking for great, unique talent. It seems obvious that labels would want great, unique music, and everybody is going to have their own take on what they think is great. What works for me might not work for you or the next person. But if you're looking to get signed to a label, you need an A&R person working at that label to think you're special to have a shot. I interviewed my friend Tom Corson one day on our Ren Man Live show and asked him what it is that labels are looking for. Here's what he had to say, quote unquote. You have to have tremendous talent to cut through to the top level of this business, no matter who you are and what genre you're in, because you're competing against the very best, and you are from day one. Labels want artists that can compete at that world-class level. 
They want artists that write great songs, artists that can perform in the studio, in photos, and in videos. The better you are at those skills, the easier it is for a label to help break you. If you have all of those qualities, it's even better. Labels want artists with a strong vision of who they are. Artists who understand what their true north is and who they are and what they're all about. Why, you ask? Because it makes the label's job easier. In today's world, artists and their representatives can paint their own picture with their music, their photos, their videos, and the imaging on their website. It's all about presentation and you can control how it comes across. But labels are looking for more than just talent. There's lots of talented people out there. They want to know that you've got your head screwed on right, that you understand what you're getting into, and that you will be a part of the process with them. They'll want to know that an artist has the heart, that they have the desire, that they have the will to work with that label to make something big happen. They want to know that that artist is willing to learn and be open to ideas from the label when they make sense. That doesn't mean you have to say yes to everything they say. It just means that you'll need to listen and evaluate and be part of the dialogue. Remember back to our big picture lesson, money wants an opinion, and in this case, most of the money is coming from the label. In addition to that talent, in addition to that desire, they want to know that you've got a strong team around you. Labels do not want to work with difficult or inexperienced manager, and the reason is there's too much at stake. When a label signs an artist, they're making a huge commitment of time and money with no guarantee of success for either party. To hedge their bets, they want to know that the folks that they're getting in business with can help in the process. They don't want bystanders. They want active participants who can help move the needle. We've talked about building that professional team, and this right here is where it makes a huge difference. Having the right manager or lawyer in place can increase your chances of getting signed, assuming that you have that great, unique talent that the label's looking for. Finally, the labels want to know that you've laid some groundwork on your own. Now, this is really ground zero for all you indie artists and your representatives out there. This is where the rubber meets the road. Getting signed today means getting the attention of those labels. How are you going to do that? by writing, recording, and distributing your music, by building community around that music, getting your fans engaged on your website, on SoundCloud, on iTunes or YouTube. And it doesn't matter if it's all free in the beginning, it's about showing that you've got something that can attract attention. If you're a performer, you'll show it by playing gigs and doing business when you do play those gigs. If you do have a clear image of who you are, then you'll show it in your photos and in your videos, and you can actually control that part of the equation. This is where that fuck the gatekeeper attitude we talked about in the big picture shows itself. You'll need to do all of this stuff with limited resources, and you'll need to resist the temptation to whine about how tough it is and just make it happen. When you can make this happen, it starts to validate your unique talent for those labels and, and for yourself as well. It reminds everybody that there's something going on. Labels aren't expecting millions of views or followers. What they're looking for are signs from those YouTube views or those SoundCloud listens and followers, that fan engagement, those ticket sales at the clubs, those merch sales at the counter. Things that might suggest that the good vibes they have about you as an artist in your music are real and that you're worthy of being signed. That label is going to make a big bet on you. They want to feel like they can win and you can have a huge part in making them feel that they can. One of the things about our course that makes it unique is that we give you a chance to virtually network with and learn from some of the smartest folks in the music business who've appeared on my web show, Rent Man Live. In this supplemental video, Capitol Records UK President Nick Raphael talks about what he looks for when signing an artist. Now, Nick is one of the top A&R execs in the business who most recently signed Grammy Award winner Sam Smith in Five Seconds to Summer. So let's hear what he has to say. Number one factor, likability. You can be the most talented, ambitious fucker on the universe. Mm. If you are unlikable, 
the public are going to hate you. If you are a and a you are a and a Number two, ambition. If you are fucking lazy and you are not willing to sacrifice, then you will fail, fact. Number three and third in the importance mm. is talent. Because we can name some of the greatest artists of all time and there are better singers, better guitar players, better songwriters and better musicians than them. But the truth is they had ambition, likability and enough talent and enough songwriting ability or they were good at pairing up with other songwriters and musicians that made the difference. Okay, now that we've watched the video lesson in the supplemental video, let's see what we've learned by taking the quiz. Okay, our first question. If you ask a bunch of record execs what they are looking for when they sign artists, they'll all say pretty much the same thing. What is it? Answer number one, they want platinum selling artists. Number two, artists who will do exactly what they want and not ask questions. Number three, good looking artists. And number four, great unique talent. All right, so let's put down our answer. I'm gonna say great unique talent. Question number two, record labels are going to invest lots of money building an artist's career, but they won't be able to do it alone. Assuming an artist has the prerequisite talent, what other important qualities are they likely to look at? Number one, they want to know that the artist has a great attitude and work ethic. Number two, they want a piece of the artist publishing. Number three, the artist has not been on another label. And number four, the artist has lots of experience. Let's put down, they want to know that the artist has a great attitude and work ethic. Question number three. A label is looking at two equally talented artists and is trying to decide which one to sign. One of the artists has made two EPs on their own, built a healthy social media fan base, built a real live touring business on a regional basis, and has made some great videos on their own. The other artist wrote some great songs but has never played a live gig, seems unaware or uninterested in the marketing process. Which one do you think the label would sign? Number one, the artist that is getting started and is counting on the label to do all the foundation building. Or two, the artist that has already built a foundation for a career. Okay, I'm going to say the artist has already built a foundation for a career. Okay, now that we've entered all our answers, let's see how we do by clicking the complete quiz button. Each quiz is automatically graded and you can immediately see how you did. So if you get an answer wrong, you'll notice that in addition to telling you what the correct answer is, there's also a brief explanation of why I think that answer makes the most sense. When you're done taking the quiz, you can share your results on social media by clicking the share buttons at the bottom of the page. Make sure you let everybody know how smart you are. And finally, if you want to take the quiz again, just click the reset button and you're back in business. One final thing. You can also keep track of your progress as you work your way through the course. You'll notice that when you complete a lesson, a green check mark appears in the course summary on the right side of the screen. That's how the lessons work. And that lesson is just one of over 150 lessons that make up the course. And I promise that if you take the time to finish all of them, when you're done, you'll be thinking like a real music business professional. You have two ways you can take the course, the solo version and the mentor version. Let's talk about the solo version. On the solo version, you can go at your own pace. You can study what you want, when you want. The course works on your desktop computer, your laptop, your tablet, or your smartphone. You'll get access to any updates to the course. New supplemental information and interviews with our top folks in the biz are added all the time. And you can have full access to all of this on the solo version for $99.99. Our goal was to have an option that any person serious about a music business career could actually afford. Now, I know from working with musicians for my whole adult life that most musicians do not have a lot of money, particularly true when they're just getting started. But my experience with musicians also tells me that I've not met a musician yet that can't find a hundred bucks for things like, well, let's say tickets to a show, a brand new guitar pedal, a night out with their friends, 
an update on their Logic Pro Tools, or maybe even a little uh, urban beer to make that music feel a little bit better. For those of you looking for a more structured and personal approach, you might want to consider our mentor program. When we first developed the course, my intent was to make it so that the user would be totally self-sufficient. They'd have all the info they needed to get started, and for me, my work would be done. But over the last few months, I've gotten lots of emails asking if there was an option where folks could have some direct interaction with me to ask questions and to get personal feedback on issues in their careers. So I listened, and now we have a new option, and it's called the mentor version. And here's how it works. In this version of the course, I will be just like your personal mentor for 10 weeks. Instead of taking the course on your own, you'll be part of a structured 10-week program where we will go through each module in a specific order. And you will not be left on your own in this version. You'll receive an email each day of the week with your lessons for the day. And every Monday for 10 weeks, you'll be invited to a private Google Hangout with me and your fellow mentor students where we'll discuss that week's lessons and I'll answer any questions you have on the course or about your career. In addition, we're going to make all those lessons available on MP3 so you can listen on the run, in your car, on the train, or in an airplane. If you pass the course, you'll also receive a personal recommendation letter from me verifying your readiness to work in the music business. And just to make sure that Renman U is never far from your mind, we're going to set you up with a Renman MB swag pack, which will include a Renman MB t-shirt, coffee mug, and a mouse pad. Well, by now, you should have a much better idea of what your options are when it comes to learning about the music business, and hopefully you're on your way to figuring out what the best option is for you. Now let me tell you why I think our Renman U Insider's Guide to Today's Music Business might be the best option of all. We talked a bit earlier about some important factors you'll want to consider as you make your decision. So let's see how our course stacks up against those other options. First, the cost of tuition. In terms of cost, we offer two options that almost anybody can afford. You won't have to take out any student loans to learn about the music business at Renman U. Our solo option offers you a ton of knowledge for a price that any musician or aspiring professional can afford. The mentor version offers you everything you get in the solo version, but with direct access to a true industry professional for guidance and answers to your questions. And it will cost you tens of thousands of dollars less than going to college and less than any comparable online option. Secondly, when it comes to location, location is not an issue with our course. You can study wherever you like, from home, in your car, on a train, or on a plane. Anywhere you can get an internet connection, you can learn at Renman U. How about the quality and expertise of your instructors? Well, your professor at Renman U is one of those doers with tons of real world experience that can add value to your understanding of the real music business. At Renman U, your instructor has spent the last 37 years working and succeeding in the music business as a concert promoter, a record executive, an internet entrepreneur, and an artist manager. And I've spent the last two and a half years taking that knowledge and experience and sharing it with folks just like yourself. And finally, when it comes to curriculum and the approach to teaching the music business, our Renman U course offers you the best of both worlds, a structured academic approach with an insider's view to give you context to those lessons. You'll learn about all the important things you need to know about the music business, but with the perspective of a true music industry insider. And even if you choose another option to learn the music business, I think our course still can be a great real world supplement. Bottom line is this, if you want to learn the music business, let me be your music business mentor. When you get done with my course, you won't be thinking like some rookie getting out of college. You'll think like a grizzly music business veteran. And oh, I almost forgot. We said we would talk about the secrets of all those top people in the music business, what led them to their success. And actually, it's not much of a secret at all. Those folks that succeed in the music business are doers. If you ask the biggest players in the music business today, 99% of them will tell you they learn the music business by doing. 
and many of them took any gig they could get just to get in the door when they got started. Many of those folks started working at the music business while they were in college. My manager, Bruce Floor worked at the college radio station, which helped him get his first job in the record business. Longtime No Doubt manager, Jim Guerno, ran the concert committee while he was in college. Jeff Costellas, president of Electra Records, did the same back in college in Wisconsin. All of them learned on the job. And today, you have a lot more options to learn the music business than ever, and you should definitely take advantage of them. But while you're learning, don't forget to be a doer. Don't make studying the music business your excuse for not doing. If you're looking to do something big in this music business, get started today.